Brandon with BeesusProductions.com here, bringing you video dev blog number four. So uh, last I left off uh, with my video dev blog three, I was talking about ledge grabbing. Well, that was pretty much abandoned. I couldn't seem to get a consistent read on the height of the object I was trying to dynamically grab onto, so the ledge grabbing would work intermittently at, uh, at the very least. So uh, between that and the fact that it really didn't feel like it added much to the experience, I wound up just scrapping it. I do, however, still have the code or the uh, script itself in case I do ever want to pick it back up for whatever reason but until then I will focus on other things uh, so first and foremost here uh, we've got some new additions I've implemented a health, a health pack as you can see uh, pretty simple just adds health back to the player based off of if they took damage if they need it if they're at full health when they pick it up it will not get picked up or trigger you know what's the point of picking it up if you're already at full health and if you are just below it it will only put you up to your maximum health instead of exceeding it so pretty simple uh, in that implementation. I also have these switches here. Uh, my idea with these was to deactivate my power cards until the switch in the scene or the level was pressed. When pressed then, uh, these would be activated throughout the scene. Kind of similar again to, I hate to say it, Mario 64. I know that I reference that a lot, but who can blame me when it's the gold standard for platformers in my opinion. So uh, much like those cap switches, that is going to work uh, very same. Uh, beyond that, I do have a dialogue system now. I will show you this in game in a bit, but I just wanted to touch on a few things before I actually hop in the game. I also have these falling platforms here. Uh, I have a couple different modes on the platform per the script over here. And uh, the way that this works is I can either have it uh, fall very quickly or instantly, if you will, after the player touches the surface here. I have a trigger box that uh, once the player touches the surface, uh, it will count down from the delay time and then immediately fall down at, at a very fast rate and then reset at its old position after this uh, amount of time. Otherwise, if that is not enabled, uh, the platform itself will simply slowly fall while the player is on it at the set rate, and then when they jump off of it and, and are out of the trigger, it will rise back to its default spot. So, kind of inspired by those donut blocks from the Mario Brothers games of uh, the old days, the old NES days and Super NES days. I think they even had them in Mario 64, but uh, unlike mine, though, my platform doesn't actually slowly fall and then drop entirely. I thought about doing that, but I thought, eh, I'll just stick with uh, something more consistent. So, uh, beyond that, I'm not sure if I touched on my suction tubes from uh, the last episode or not, but I uh, played around with the idea of having suction tubes. Uh, I had a bend in here originally, which would lead to another one, but the bend couldn't seem to stay consistent in terms of the player not getting stuck and traveling through it properly. So, uh, for now, I'm just going to kind of keep the straight ones around just for fun of it and have uh, different transitions or different uh, areas accessible on the level. Uh, beyond that, I did also implement a kill zone trigger. Uh, if you've ever worked with UDK like I have, you do recall there was an, uh, a setting in the world properties which would allow you to set basically a kill a zone for if the player fell a certain distance below that. I think it was the Z axis in UDK, which is the Y axis in Unity. That took some getting used to after my transition, but that's another story aside. I'm not quite going with that. I thought about using the Y uh, position of the player to determine that, but then I realized uh, the player could still throw items like boxes and whatnot off and they would fall endlessly. But uh, with this kill zone, I am actually just uh, applying uh, damage to the rigid body, much like anything else. So, uh, before anything else here, let's uh, hop in and I'll show you what I've got so far. All right, so first and foremost here, I do have a couple new GUI options here. I recently, uh, as in yesterday, overhauled the entire save system. I couldn't seem to get it working properly. I was using the Unity Serializer from the Asset Store, the free one by that uh, guy, uh, Why Do I Do It, I believe was his name, and it seemed to work good at first, but then I decided to change my logic around and uh, make it so that instead of collecting the card and the card disappearing, uh, upon collecting it, it would now just show with an inactive material, which I have over here, and uh, basically be uncollectible again. Kind of, again, <laughs> Mario 64. So once you collect the power star, it, it goes basically transparent, and this will do a similar effect. We'll turn the light off, and uh, the card itself will uh, be uncollectible again. So that I worked into my save system now. As of now, I do have it automatically save as soon as you collect one so that uh, upon collecting it it saves and upon re-entering the scene it will uh, disappear or automatically turn itself off upon starting the scene up. I can show you that in just a minute here. 
Uh, but uh, otherwise, I do have a couple variables here. Use autosave. This is mostly for debugging purposes. This is my uh, my switch that I'm using to toggle that autosave on or off. If this is off, uh, nothing, no saving will ever take place in my game. And in addition, I do have uh, a save slot. So another important feature of any game is multiple different save slots. Nobody wants to be limited to one save slot like you were in the Pokemon Game Boy games, or even I think modern games. Uh, it's been a while, but uh, yeah, I've got this implemented. Basically, uh, it allows for infinite saves, so as many saves as I want to implement or as many save slots as I want to have, I can use. So uh, yeah, the boring stuff aside here, let's take a look here. And first and foremost, yeah, the, uh, getting back to those buttons, I kind of lost the focus there for a minute. Oh, you'll have to excuse the ice cream truck driving by. Uh, summer is winding down, so they got to make all the money they can, I guess. So anyway, uh, what this button does is deletes the active save. So currently, you know, the physical save file sitting there, hitting that, and we get successfully deleted save file in slot one. If there is no save, no save file exists. So if it, uh, you know, exists, we purge it, and if it doesn't, we don't. <laughs> so uh, toggle auto save. As you can see here, that's just toggling the bool on and off, so I can turn that off at whim. That's a button I really probably won't use too much, but I did have another button to toggle the active save slot, but the integer doesn't seem to want to stick after toggling it in the game itself while running, so uh, I'm sure there's some logic I missed there, but in the meantime, I just decided I'll skip that. So, uh, Okay, anyway, uh, you can see here that my, <coughs> excuse me, my cards are already active. That's because I had it already saved. But I just purged my save slot, so now if we hop back in the level here, my save file is gone, and my cards are not active. So we have a transparent, can't pick it up, it's of no use to us. Uh, getting back to the other items here, first the suction tube, you hop in. Actually, I think I did cover these because I remember breaking boxes in them before, but uh, yeah, using that, and... Oh, look at that. We have fall damage now. Uh, that's another thing I've implemented. Depending on how high you fall, if you reach a certain y, negative y velocity, you will take fall damage based off of how fast you're going. I, I, right now I have three degrees of fall damage. If uh, like you saw, the player takes a minor fall, we lose two health. If they take a more major fall, they will lose five health. And if they take a seriously high fall, they'll die on impact. So with that being said, we'll try to cause some damage here. Let's, uh, in fact, let's kill the player because I have a death animation as well. So you're dead. Uh, you basically lie here until you push the jump button, at which point you respawn. I'm not sure why. Uh, that must have been a lingering force that was left from uh, the explosion box killing me. But uh, you shouldn't normally do that. You should respawn where you're at. So let's take a little bit more damage here. And we'll put that new health pack to use. Gather up the health pack. And oh, look at that. The health pack's only set to give me two health back. Not a lot of use. So, uh, moving along to actual features now, I do have a dialogue system. I'm going to have an indicator when you get within range of this uh, NPC to uh, basically sh tell you that you can talk to him. But otherwise, you come up, you talk to him, and uh, there we go. I am calling dialogue boxes per the NPC. So, the way that I have my system set up is I feed the dialogue into it uh, from, from my... Uh, my script over here. You can have as many of these as you want, so if I add a couple more, we can uh, go ahead and add these, and the game, uh, the script system, will automatically display the appropriate number based off of what it picks up in that uh, number. Uh, not sure why it skipped over two. That may be one, three. Yeah, oh, that's not sure why that's happening. So apparently I got some bugs to work out there. I'm glad I found them when I did. Uh, they seem never ending, but needless to say that is my dialogue system. I also have a narration system, kind of uh, uh, giving you a tip while you go here. Uh, this one keeps running at a timed interval until it reaches the end. Still playing around with the timings and how the interface itself is going to work, but the basic logic is there. So uh, that one you know, we'll play, display messages, maybe objectives, things like that. And the other one freezes the player until you hit the jump button to progress their message, much like the other dialogue system over here. So, uh, moving on to the moving platform itself. As I mentioned, this one is currently set to instant fall. You touch it, it, oh, this one is not instant fall. It slowly falls. You jump off of it, it rises up. Obviously, I'm changing the color red to indicate what's going on here. So it rises up to where you want to go, and it just continues to fall at a certain pace until uh, it's either 
too low for you to do anything or until it resets. So what we can do here, uh, that's a nice close-up view, we can set this to instant fall and I can show you how that works instead. So now you hop on it and it transitions and drop. So after it fades to red, uh, basically when it's dark red like that, it uh, falls out from underneath you and then it uh, blinks back into place. I originally had it rise up from the ground, but then I realized the player could just stand here while it's rising up and ride it up with them. So for now the uh, trigger or the uh, collider gets disabled as soon as it falls and then is flickered on and off like that until it's re-enabled. All right, moving along here, uh, those switches previously mentioned here activate our card. You hop on it and activate it. So simple little thing I'm going to have in each level that will uh, obviously persist throughout with my new save system, as well as these. So to sh uh, shine a little more light or shed a little more light on the save system here, we will go ahead and pick up that card. And obviously we already saved, so the card disappears until we leave the scene and come back. So let's uh, close it out, open her up again here, and we'll head back to that card we previously collected. First of all, you can already see that uh, this data did persist because our switch is still pushed down and our card is still active up here. And this card is now collected. We cannot collect it again. So it is of no use to us, and uh, basically, yeah, that's about it. I uh, apparently didn't implement the uh, persistence in the uh, total number collected in the meantime, so normally that would reflect, you know, the proper number. But uh, to focus on the, uh, the actual slots themselves here, let's hop in here, and we'll just change this to active slot 2. So now we're using a different save file entirely, and now you can see our cards are not active because again new save file and our power card or our vitality card here is back so again new save file entirely and data only persists between each of the save files so uh, we'll hop over here and I'll show you my progress here on the actual level itself so all this gameplay hasn't been for nothing this is uh, what I have so far of the first level. Again, this is just kind of a rough draft, so to speak, and I will obviously be uh, putting a lot, 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 lot more detail into this. I just wanted to get a level playable in the meantime. Another little tweak I made here, too, was the player to run faster by default. Uh, it's still faster to do the dive jump consistently, but uh, it's a little less arduous to actually run around now with this pacing. So we can head up our mountain here. Uh, this mountain, I think, was in the last build. Otherwise, I got a little farm up there and things like that, too. So I can show you the fall damage here. I will actually cut out for a second while I traverse the mountain and then come back when I'm at the top. All right, so we're at the top of the mountain here now. Uh, one of the objectives in this level is to activate all of the wind turbines, which is done by hitting the button here at which point the turbine will turn on and set a flag. When you set all six of them in the level, I do have a little event play out over here at that uh, that little generator core that will then kick out a, a vitality card for you. So uh, to show the level damage itself, we can hop down over here, and this should kill our player. Uh, apparently not. Apparently we only took a bunch of damage instead of death. So I will hop over here, or let me traverse the mountain one more time, and I'll show you one other thing. All right, so we've traversed the mountain again here, and I'm going to show off a little bonus area here, so spoiler alert, uh, but this is something I wanted to implement as well, so each level, or maybe each level, I'm not sure yet, we're going to have a little bonus area here, inspired by none other, <coughs> excuse me, than Mario Sunshine, and my player start location is currently modified, uh, but I will show what I currently have here. So you're supposed to start down there, you traverse over the obstacles that you see down there, you know, timed rotations and regular rotations and things like that taking place, uh, items that can hurt you, cause damage, knock you off, etc. I do have checkpoints and of course, you know, I'll put uh, abilities to use here. So I got my wall jump, I've added a bit more vertical momentum to that from before, before it felt almost too like you were just kicking off straight ahead instead of actually wall jumping upwards. So we can reverse up here if I could do my own if I wasn't pulling away for some reason there we go and we're up here we'll collect our card 
And one other thing that I've implemented too then too is dynamic uh, starting areas based off of leaving. We obviously don't want to start back at the beginning of the first level, so we start where we entered it here instead of at the teleporter. So uh, with that being said, that just about covers everything up to this point. I will be continuing work on my uh, on the levels themselves, get some actual gameplay now, but in terms of system functionality, once I iron out that bug with the dialogue system, I should be good to go. So until uh, volume 5, that about wraps things up, and I'll be talking to you again soon. All right, back here with one more addendum. Uh, first of all, I fixed the dialogue issue. Apparently, I was double registering uh, my my button press. So for some reason, upon doing the button press, it would automatically skip the next one in the dialogue series. So after uh, resolving that here, I do have the proper dialogue working now upon button press. So I will uh, demonstrate that here now. Let me just fire that up. And now we talk. Oh, there's one, two, three, four, five. And same thing applies over here now as well. One, two, three, four, five. So no more uh, double registering button presses, and all's working well. Uh, another thing I left out here is uh, there's a new attack feature that uh, might be worth mentioning. Uh, now, upon hitting the attack button, we can attack. And based on if we're moving or if we're standing still, we do a different attack. So we got a jump attack, jump attack, and of course, as you'd expect, we do damage with it. So, a little something else here to uh, use. Uh, so, <laughs> that's about it. Not much else to say about an attack. It works, and all is working well with it. So, uh, with that being said, now I am officially out for Volume 4, and like I said before, we'll talk to you in Volume 5.